Hi, and welcome to this lesson. A quick short lesson. I just want to show you and talk about some of the differences between pivot tables and the query function, because I have described the query function as a pivot table in function form, but it does so much more than that. And I want to also just show, uh, talk about the pros and cons of each, because they're both fantastic tools and both useful in different situations. So let's start with the similarities. So they both take data sets and they both can aggregate or pivot those data sets, create summary results and reports for you. And they can both turn tall data sets into wide data sets through the pivot function. So tall data sets tend to be sort of how data is stored in databases. Wide format is when we, we turn one of the columns into a header row and then sort of put our data into a 2D array format, very much like the spreadsheet type format, which is how charts like to, or the chart tool rather likes to have the data presented. So both query function and the pivot table can do that transformation from tall into wide for us. What about the pros and cons then this time? So we'll jump in and see the uh, both of these in a Google Sheet in just a moment, but let's just run through and talk about them briefly for a moment. So the query function is incredibly versatile, incredibly powerful too. It can do much, much more than a pivot table can because it can work on your data, not just aggregating. So pivot table is all about aggregating your data, rolling it up and then filtering and sourcing and things. Pivot table can do that, but it can also just transform and modify and change the data itself. You don't have to aggregate it. And then the other great thing that the query function does is it works, of course, with other functions. So you can nest a query function inside of another query function. You can take other functions, nest them as the data inputs to query functions. So it's very, very powerful once it's, you start to work it with other functions. And you can set it up once, and then it's great for using as a staging uh, setup for data reporting. So your data inputs come flowing into the query function. The same modification is recipe is set up and running, does the transformation, spits out the results the other side, which go into your report. So it's really nice for a sort of setup, create once, and then it runs as your data input. Now, what about some of the cons of the query function? Well, it can be brittle if your underlying data changes. Because it's a string input where you're telling, you know, the recipe is written out as a string, it's not dynamic, it doesn't move. If your columns swap order, swap order or move around or get deleted or new columns get added, it doesn't automatically update the query string. You have to go back and change it. And it can lead to errors if you don't do that. So it can be brittle if your underlying data is changing a lot. It's also not as quick or flexible as the pivot table. It takes a little bit more knowledge and a, a bit more work to set up and create the query string. And then if you do need to modify it, it's not as quick as the pivot table. Also, it doesn't come with a built-in total row. That has to be added yourself, and that's more challenging than adding totals or subtotals in pivot tables. So keep those in mind when you're thinking about the query function. Great for workflows, used with other formulas, uh, data analysis, not so good for the quick exploration of your data. So if you wanna just dive into data, quickly figure out some summary tables, try the pivot table because it's really, really quick, really flexible. You can swap rows and columns very easily in the pivot table editor. So it's really a great tool for exploring your data. Some of the drawbacks of, of the pivot table are that it doesn't, work easily or nicely with other formulas. You can't sort of take a pivot table easily and put it as an input to another, another function. Then the pivot table editor that pops up all the time when you go near a pivot table can get really annoying if you're trying to just look at the data and work with the data. So that can be a drawback. Also, it's easy to break pivot tables because they're so flexible. It's very easy to pop that bar open uh, and, and drag things around, move them, and suddenly your whole pivot table is totally changed and you can't remember how to get it back to, to where it was. All right, let's dive into a Google Sheet now and see some of these in action. So back in our data set that we've been using so far, we have the sales data here. Remember I have the name range as well, real estate data. 
So let's compare and contrast pivot table versus a query function. So actually the first thing we'll do is we'll come into data two and we'll create that pivot table. Now, I'm not trying to teach you pivot tables, so I'm gonna run through this fairly quickly. I've linked some results below um, an article and even a course of mine all about pivot tables if you want to go further with the pivot table. And they are worth learning. So uh, it is worth learning pivot tables. They're a great tool to have. So we'll pick, uh, it, it, it highlights the whole data set. We'll say existing sheets. We'll jump back into here and, and put it here in this query sheet. We will create and we'll list, we'll take the property type. It'll aggregate those and count them for me. Uh, uh, and We'll summarize by those. We'll drop property type into values, count them. And then we'll also put sales price in. And there we go. It's super quick to just go and create that. You saw how quick that was to get that summary table. It uh, lists them all. It's got my grand totals. If I want to swap things around, if I suddenly decided actually, uh, you know, I want to do it by not by property type. I want to have the representation by a seller instead. It's really quick to go and do that. Uh, you know, lead source could go in there. So it's really, it's really quick. They're really flexible. You can just drop and drag things in and move things around and set it up exactly how you want. So that's the pivot table. And you can see, as I said, some of the pros there, uh, the advantages there of, it, of how quick it is to go and explore your data. Now, the problem is that every time I go near the pivot table or click on it, this big thing pops up over here, which can kind of be annoying if this is a reporting type sheet because you, you really don't want that popping up. Um, also, it's hard to, you know, if I start to use these in other places, I want to use this in a formula and then I come in here and uh, my, my pivot table changes. So say uh, we added in representation as well. Suddenly it breaks because that was in the way now, I had to delete it. it uh, so they can be, they don't work particularly well when you're trying to integrate them with other formulas because the data is self-contained in the pivot table and you can't just easily draw that into other formulas. There is the get pivot data function, but it's really a challenging, really awkward function to use. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend uh, using this one, it's, it's a really difficult function to use. Okay, so that's the pivot table. Let's just put it back to, to that. Okay, so let's build the same thing now with the query function. So we'll say query, real estate data. I've just set up that named range to use. And we'll say select B, uh, count B, sum E, group by B with one header, hit enter, and there we go. And you can see, uh, once you get the hang of the query function, it's not really any slower than the pivot table. It was pretty quick for me to create that. But if I suddenly decided to, actually I want to add representation in here, then you know I have to go back to my data, find out what that's called D. So we're going to have to add in D here. I need to then group by D. And you can see that was a lot uh, more difficult to do that. It took me some time to figure out and it's more prone to, to errors than just the way I could move and drag and drop them in the pivot table. So it has some limitations there. You'll also notice it doesn't automatically format your data. So I need to go back and, and format it here. I can do that format step inside of my query function here, as you'll see in the course. Um, but that obviously makes my query string a little bit longer, or I can just easily add that here. The bigger mission, of course, is that it doesn't automatically add a total row, which may or may not be an issue depending on what you're trying to do. There are ways to add the total row with the query function, which we're going to look at in the course, but they're definitely not uh, very quick or easy. It's, it involves a few complex formulas. So if you're trying to do something quick and easy and just quickly calculate some totals, pivot table is a better option. If you're trying to create a data analysis workflow where this query function is 
uh, where the functions are acting on the data and you're trying to set the data up to use to build reports, then the query function is, is a superior option. And now, once I've set this up, you see I can use this as the input for other functions. So for example, I will see in the course, we might wrap it with another query function that does something with the data here. So select col one or, or whatever we decide to do. And this inner query here is called a subquery. We'll see this all in the course, don't worry. But it works, you see, with other functions. It lets you do that. Um, it, it works really well with nesting with other functions. So another thing, of course, that you can do with the query function that you can't do with um, pivot tables at all is let's take our data again, so the real real estate data, and this time, let's say we want to just select different columns, select D, B, E. So we want to just put the columns in a totally different order and we only want a few of them now. Maybe we want to uh, order by E descending in highest to lowest. So you can see it's really easy to do these sorts of transformations. And we've actually gone and created a new data table here with the columns in a different order. Maybe we want to uh, divide E by 100. For some reason, we want to know what the house prices would be like. Or actually, let's say, um, let's say what would happen if the, we're trying to figure out what would happen if the house prices decreased by 10%, then that's what they would look like. We could have E and the 10% the, the less price to the side. So it gives you options to create data sets that you just can't do with the standard pivot tables. All right, that will do for this lesson. I don't want you to be worrying about how I created these query functions in this lesson. It was just to illustrate the differences between the pivot and the query, some of the strengths and weaknesses of each one, when you might use them, when you might not. We're going to see all of these query techniques I showed you including things like these multiplications, the sorts, the grouping, all of that is to come. So uh, just for the moment, let that just soak in. Don't worry about trying to be able to recreate that yet yourself. Wait till you see them in the lessons. All right, <laughs> that will do for this lesson on the query function and the pivot table. We won't see the pivot table again now. We're sticking with the query function. I'll see you soon, folks, in the next lesson.